Where do you connect with God? So we're thinking about today as we connect here in this place, we also connect with God elsewhere. Kind of like our breath, if you might think of it, we come to church, we breathe in, and then we go out. And there's God all week long in different places, different times, different ways. The story of Jesus in the temple this morning is the rare one of his uh, anger. It isn't often that we think of Jesus angry, but he certainly was. He overturned tables and he made a whip out of cords and said, out of here, all of you. And you might wonder why in the world that would happen, especially when it was commanded in the Old Testament that we'd bring offerings to God. According to your blessings, you're to bring offerings. If you're a wealthy person, you'd bring a big, strong oxen. A little less wealthy, you'd bring perhaps a sheep. The poor people would have doves and pigeons to bring as their only offering because they couldn't afford more. And so they were at a temple for what they believed was the right reasons. But just like for us, when sometimes we come to church, which we believe are the right reasons, there are other ones that Jesus wants us to think about, perhaps a little deeper. Perhaps the money changers were charging an exorbitant fee Perhaps the selling price of an ox or a sheep was way more than the market value. Perhaps Jesus wasn't too pleased with the people who didn't think about their offerings before they came and they just went to church late and said, oh, I'll just have somebody else do it for me. Here, let me peel off some money and they'll give me my fattened ox and I can sacrifice that. That'll be good enough. Maybe Jesus was mad at those who were worshiping. We're not sure. We do know that doves were very common in that day. And doves, you didn't have to buy a dove. You could catch one. There were so many of them in biblical times that you could catch one and bring it yourself for free. And that's the reason doves were accepted as, an, as a sacrifice. And yet here they were selling them in the temple. So there are lots of reasons why there, his anger perhaps was spurred in the temple. But I think even deeper than the buying and the selling that was going on, which he was clearly not in favor of, I think what the Holy Spirit was doing was blowing out the people from the temple to go out into the world to recognize that God is not only found in one place. That like our breath, when we draw it in, we're filled with God here. We breathe it out in our days through the week. We experience God wherever we go. And if we develop eyes for that, we'll be surprised at times how often God is present, doing things, not always what we want, but always with us in the journey. There are many ways that we might know God. We might see and hear, and feel, and taste, and even smell. Even our place has a wonderful smell of its own because of the era that it was built nearly 100 years ago. Now, if you will indulge me just a little bit, one of the quirks of my personality is that I love humorous exaggeration. And I would like to sense Maybe it's because of the time change. I'm not sure. I didn't sleep quite right last night or had dreams or something. But maybe you come to this church because, well, the music that Eric plays is so good that the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts are going to call us tomorrow morning and ask him to come there and play for them. And, and Corinne's is singing, and it is good. It is a blessing. It's so good that the voice calls her every week and she goes, I don't have time for you. I've got a family and I've got a job here and I'm not going on the voice, so quit bothering me. <laughs> Maybe you come here because your pastor's sermons are so captivating. They're so award-winning that it makes you want to leap tall buildings, soar through the air like Superwoman or Superman. And, and CNN sets up towers outside the door. <laughs> They're going to broadcast our services. And, and your pastor gets invited to go to the White House for, for prayers in Congress. And, and at the Super Bowl, he gives the opening prayer for the Super Bowl. That'd be something. <laughs> Maybe it's more like all week long you're able to tell your friends, you know what? It's been at least a year since somebody fell asleep during pastor's sermon and hit their head on the pew in front of them. <laughs> Maybe that's more like it. <laughs> I don't know. But I do know there are so many ways to experience God. There are so many ways. I'm always amazed at our barn service. A lot of you have been to the barn service or perhaps you've hear, heard about it and Howard's here this morning. He's already planning on next, next year's. He's been into it a month or two already. Maybe lining up a camel. Who knows? We'll see who shows up. I'm amazed at the connections people make with God in the barn. And it helps me to realize that wherever we are and whatever we do, it is true that God is there. 
And in these temple times this morning, where Jesus came, you know, people made lifetime uh, pilgrimage to the temple. And once in their life, it was like their bucket list. Get to the temple once in my life, and it would be the best thing that ever happened to them. And, and they're certainly not wrong to go to the temple. What Jesus is saying this morning is, it's bigger than the temple. God is far more uh, pervasive than the temple. That in the chaos all around us, which is a representative of the money changers and the buying and the selling going on, Jesus gets angry when those things hijack us and take us from our, uh, our, our, our heartfelt faith in him. I believe Jesus turned it upside down this morning in the scripture to make the point, which is our faith belongs in him and in nothing else. And there are so many temptations every week. So many, so many temptations to know, to see, to smell, to taste, to hear. All kinds of things except God. So as you breathe in deeply this morning and you write on your card what it is that you, how you understand God when we're here. And then on the backside, where you're going to see God this week or where you're going to be, that God may well show up. Please share openly. And please be aware of that truth. That it is indeed the Lord our God who made you, who is with you, who gives you the laws of the commandments this morning, who gives us the scriptures, the time together, the breath in our lungs, the pulse in our veins, life in our souls, because of faith in Jesus Christ. Amen.